Welcome everybody to Python course for kids. Muhammad Karim and Ahmed are speaking from T Square Technical Talk YouTube channel. This is our second part in episode 2 calculator. Last video, part 1, Muhammad showed you the basic Python operators. In this video, I will introduce to you the variable definition and numerical variables examples. Let's get started. Variable definition. I can't think of the variable except it's a box. Inside the box, we store the information, which is the variable value. Outside the box, there is a label which the variable name or identifier, and we create a new variable, that box, along with its value inside and its label outside, are stored in a reserved memory location in our computer, creating or assigning new variables and variable types. There are many types of variables in Python, like integers, floating point, complex, string, boolean, list, tuple, set, and dictionary. However, this time we will be only discussing about a few of these. Let's start out with integer. An integer is any whole number. It can be positive or negative between these two 19 digit numbers. This is our variable weekly IXL. Weekly IXL's value is 5. We assign a value of 5 to weekly IXL. And when we print I weekly IXL, we get its value inside, which is 5. Do you see this green line with a hash character in it? This is a comment that the entire system will not even notice. It will act like it's not there and it will not function anything. It is a comment that helps the reader to understand this line of code better. Let's move on to floating point. Floating point, also known as float, is any number that includes a decimal point. It can be positive or negative as well as integers. But the biggest advantage of float type over integer that it, that it can be as big as a 308 digit number or it can be as small as a 300 digit number behind the decimal point as shown here. Here's an example. In our variable called sandwich cost the variable value that we have assigned to sandwich cost is 12.7 when we print it we should receive its value which is 12.7 for those observant people who may have noticed that when i print the value inside the weekly ixl variable i use the print function while i type the variable name in the other example of the sandwich cost variable both approaches worked fine in the same way. However, there is a difference between them. In the next example, we'll explain it. In the first example here, we wrote, we just wrote the variable names and we expect to receive the printout of their value. Let's do it. Here only the last variable was printed. In the second example here, we use the print function for both variables. And as you can see, this resulted into both values being shown. So the conclusion here that whenever we need to print more than one variable value, then the only way is to use the print function for each variable. Next, we have the string. String is the easiest variable to understand. It is nothing but a text in between two single or double quotations. You can think about it as any collection of characters numbers, letters, or special characters. In our example here, called book name, we assign to it the variable value Peter Pan. When we run it, it's going to give us Peter Pan, just like how we wanted it. Next, we have Boolean. Boolean is the smallest variable that has only two possible values, either true or false. This is our example. We assign the variable pizza the value false. When we print the our variable pizza, we should receive just false. And if you haven't, here we use the type function. Type function is one of the built-in functions in Python, and we will talk about it. And we will talk about the built-in function and variable later in the other episodes. Type function prints out the data type of the variable. Now, if we execute it, we should receive false which is second line and bool which is short for boolean 
which is our third line. Bool is data type pizza. Before we move on, I just want to clarify the difference between comparison and assigning. When you compare something, also known as comparison, you put two equal signs. But when you're assigning something, you use only one equal sign. As an example, pizza, which is still false, is compared to true. It is still false because the first line didn't change its value. It just compared it. Changing variable types without function. Python is the easiest programming language where there is no special command for declaring a variable. As you saw in the previous examples, to create a new variable or to assign a new value to an existing variable, we just name the variable and use the equal sign to put the value inside that variable. Also, Python like magic that can change the variable data type without using a single command or function. Here, I defined the variable called food and assigned a value of 15. Python automatically understood it as an integer. Then I assigned to the same variable the true value. So Python converted automatically its type to a Boolean data type to fit the new value type as true. Here we're going to execute the code. As you can see in the first one, it says int because food before getting changed true data type it used to be an integer. Here it says bool, which is short for boolean. Boolean is all about true or false and true part of true and false so it is so the type is boolean variable name before closing our video i would like here to mention a couple of variable naming types. as you saw when we created a new variable in the previous example we followed the following rules to name the variable number one python contains only letters numbers and underscore number two it starts with a letter or an underscore but not a number. Number three, spaces are not allowed inside the variable name, but you can still use the underscore instead of spaces. Number four, variable name is case sensitive, which means a variable name with lowercase letters is not equal to the same name with capital letters. Number five, and lastly, variable names shall be short and descriptive. For example, instead of using the cost of this sandwich name, we used sandwich cost while both names are descriptive which means it has a lot of details that give the reader the purpose behind the variable however the first variable the cost of this sandwich is very long yes python allows to use long names but it is not a best practice as a programmer on the other hand we didn't use this s underscore c name s for sandwich and c for cost because it doesn't have any meaning to the reader and it will make a lot of confusion. So we need to balance between having descriptive details in the variable name and being too long or too short. With that, I concluded my video. Thank you and see you next time.